Well, how interesting. I was uh, right in the middle of recording and uh, camera cut out. So let's see how we do this time. All right. To recap for the third time, uh, first time I didn't like what I had to say. Second time we got cut off. And now it's dark outside, so we have a different ambiance. I wanted to get together and talk a little bit more about Pacific War from Mark Herman, uh, it's an old Victory Games title. And and I, I want to revise my uh, comments, thoughts, and opinions on the game, I guess. And I thought I'd start out by looking at what you see as the gameplay. You know, you're, you're kind of put in the role of, <clears throat> I guess, uh, you know, a regional headquarters uh, type of situation and you uh, have control of multiple task forces and CVs and you've got both land, air and navy, right? So it's a big role. You also dig down and uh, jump on the microscope and zoom in on the individual composition of task forces and you will assess uh, when to strike, how to strike, what to strike with, and then you'll also detail, work out what's going to happen in the battle uh, when you get into naval combat. <clears throat> At the higher level, you're choosing via a set of command points how long an operation to run, how many ships and, and units to activate in that operation. And uh, you have this uh, very innovative uh, concept of time that accelerates as the action increases. Uh, so things move relatively slowly as you're moving around on the fringes and then as you close into combat things, uh, the, the pace picks up significantly. And it's one of the cooler ideas for the, uh, a game that I've seen in a long time. And you think back, way back then, pretty significant and very innovative and I'm surprised it hasn't been used uh, again. Uh, uh, same with the combat charts and all the rest of it, very clever for their time and very clever as we, even in relation to things today. Uh, one combat table can really cover every type of naval and air uh, result and then another table for land-based combat which is probably pretty specific to Pacific Island warfare. It probably doesn't lend itself well to uh, any other type of warfare, and I'm thinking more about you know some sort of European style thing. So uh, I think I was fairly enthusiastic about the game the last time I talked about it, and I still am. I, I still am, but I, I see where the shine has worn off, and some of the holes were exposed as we played today and wrapped up the Guadalcanal campaign scenario. Uh, didn't finish it on the due date. We finished it uh, three months early, and primarily uh, for a couple of reasons. I think we got a little frustrated with the task force composition, the ratio of capital and non-capital ships, really was kind of at odds with what my well-read buddy thinks of how naval warfare works. Uh, which, you know, you can put more than one task force in a, in a hex so it, it, you can solve that problem. but. Uh, that was kind of a niggle. The big thing that we came to was once we'd finished this operation that I ran, which was uh, large by Japanese standards, in that key October month where you get a kind of, it's a reaction situation where the Japanese realize that something bigger is going on, so they put a lot of focus and effort in, so you get a lot of command points and a lot of stuff you can activate, which in hindsight could have been done in multiple ways. Uh, you could have done uh, one or two smaller actions or you could have done uh, one large action. I chose one large, large action because I wanted to get as many forces from truck to uh, Guadalcanal and to staging areas around Rabaul, excuse me, as possible. And I wanted to try and do uh, a landing in uh, Guadalcanal and try and reinvade and recapture the hex because we'd lost the hex. So with all that in mind, we, we set out to do that uh, failed, uh, lost most of those forces that invaded, and that would that left me with uh, six infantry steps in total, including reinforcements that would come onto the board. Twenty-four for the Americans, clearly a uh, four-to-one ratio out, outgunned on uh, land, outgunned in the air now because we lost a CV due to submarine attacks, um, which I'm going to get to in a second. I'm going to cross that finger, uh, and uh, so. 
what ended up happening is we finished this operation off and then there's this still active units and we still have days left in the month and our understanding is that you still get to kind of go through and use those active units which were just submarines so he went ahead and just attacked my units that i had in uh, uh, coastal water anchorage uh, by guadalcanal probably not a good choice uh, by me to do that but i needed to try and isolate guadalcanal and prevent supply uh, so he couldn't reinforce that or bring air units in and stuff like that. So I was prepared to sacrifice some units. Well, I didn't realize that, uh, you know, he was going to roll, well, roll uh, for some rain attacks and uh, basically be eligible to have, you know, between three and five submarine attacks every couple of days. And that was going to happen six times. We multiplied that out. We did the first two or three. I lost a CV. I lost the tone, which I think is a light cruiser. I had three ships left, and we looked at it and said, "Well, they're all going to die." And uh, that just felt kind of wrong to me that we would sit there and let the subs shoot, and I would not move or take evasive action or be able to respond or do anything like that uh, for a period of 12 days or 10 days or whatever the case might be. So that, that kind of rankled everybody, actually. Uh, made the sub seem terribly overpowered. And quick look online, and of course, fair enough, everyone has kind of come to the same conclusion. So do I still like the game? Yes. Will I still play it again? Probably. I'll probably never play the campaign game. I think I'll just play scenarios. I think that's what the game's designed for. Uh, and probably where it works best. I think it'll get massively off the rails if you did otherwise. But clearly, US subs in 42, 43 are way, way, way too powerful. Uh, you know, those suckers with a five rating are, uh, are, are, are putting hits on everything that moves. So pretty nasty stuff. Uh, overall, I found the rule book to be very annoying, very poorly structured verbose to the uh, to an extreme and that added to the frustration level of the gameplay because we go over things again and again and again and uh, we just we just have to go back and double check and you can't remember where the section is what you know something to do with topic A is kind of tucked in under topic B a little bit but then there's something else somewhere in topic C that refers to it and you're like ah so I would encourage you to play it because I think it's probably a great operational scale game and there are very few of those available. There are really no great tactical uh, uh, invasion or uh, tactical scale Pacific Island games around that I like. Uh, and uh, for a strategic level, I haven't played Empire of the Suns, uh, I haven't got my head around that game yet and I'm not sure that I will necessarily. Uh, We'll see what happens with that. So this is kind of one of those few titles that I find that is at that the right scale that uh, gives us a feel for the, the size and scope of the situation and some of the decisions that were faced versus, say, a CV or uh, Midway or any one of those uh, half a dozen other uh, um, you know, naval carrier games that are out there and all that's fine. You want to dig in on that detail. That's cool. There's lots of good games at that scale, but there's not many that combine uh, air, land, and sea the way this does at, uh, at the scale that it does. So it's pretty cool. That said, I don't know that I'm buying the upgrade. I don't know that I'm buying the new release. I, uh, if there's not a significant rules revision and an update, and if I heard correctly on a podcast that uh, there's, there's going to be a generous... Uh, an effort to make all of the ships generic in terms of you know no names and uh, uh, kind of equalizing all the counter values for battleships and cruisers, then that's a big no-no for me. I, that would be a big turnoff. Uh, the counters would be, have to be much more readable than they are today, and I would hope that it would actually be a larger footprint and have bigger hexes so that we can uh, actually leave some stuff on the map instead of having to use uh, these task force counters, which would also imply that uh, the entire task force sheet management system get a, a refresh and a rethink. Um, that said, that's kind of where I'm at with this at the moment. 
uh, you you know good objectives in all the scenarios, great order of battle, uh, conflict resolution is awesome because of the way all the different tables work. I think it's very smart. Uh, it's just convoluted to find out certain things uh, in the rule book. Uh, pretty good historical narrative, I suppose. So, you know, it's it's a good game. It's worth getting if you can get it cheap. It's come down in price a lot, given that there's a reprint coming. So have a look at it. Try it out. It's it's a meaty effort. You're going to have to invest a bit of time. And uh, there my, you know, kind of uh, revised thoughts on, on this game and, and where, where, it, uh, where it sits with me today. Anyway, all right, talk to you guys soon.